Hello, my name is Milan and I have a very interesting topic for you today. I'm going to talk about the domain events pattern that is very popular in domain driven design. I'll show you how we can use the domain events pattern to move some of the code from our command handlers while still preserving the same behavior inside of our application. Here we have our aggregate root implementation that we implemented in our previous video. I'm going to use the aggregate root as the base class for introducing the concept of domain events in our system. But first of all, what is a domain event? I'm going to create a simple marker interface that will define a domain event. I'm going to call it I domain event. Let's get rid of these unused using statements and move to file scope namespaces. I'm also going to make this interface public. This is all that we need to define our concept of domain events. Domain events are records of something that has already occurred in our system. So things like when creating a member, we have a member created domain event. When a gathering is created, we have a gathering created domain event. And for example, when accepting the invitation, we can raise the invitation accepted domain event. You can see that the names of these events are in the past. This is important. An event represents something that has already happened. And now we are reacting to that event. How we are going to use domain events is raise them after a certain operation is completed and handle them separately to perform some additional logic. I'm going to use the invitation accepted domain event and show you how we can use it to our advantage. I will create a new folder, which I will call domain events. Domain events, all right. And inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new class, which I will call invitation accepted domain event. Going to quickly fix this up. Now I want this domain event to be public, I want it to be sealed, and I want it to inherit from I domain event. I also am not going to use classes for the implementation, but rather I'm going to use records. Records are a new C sharp feature, well not so new anymore, but their advantage is that they are immutable. I'm going to create a new record using this inline constructor approach. The invitation accepted domain event is going to contain the invitation ID and for example, the gathering ID. All right, I mentioned that we are going to use the aggregate route for implementing domain events and I'm going to show you how. Inside of our aggregate route base class, I'm going to define a new field that is going to contain our domain events. So I'll say private read only list of I domain event, and this is important. This will allow us to raise different types of domain events. So I'll call it domain events and initialize it to an empty list. And I want to create a new method inside of the ag aggregate root. This method is going to be protected. So it is only going to be available inside of our aggregate root. And I'm going to call it raise domain event. It's going to obviously accept a domain event argument. And the only thing it does is it adds this domain event to our domain event array. All right, now we have a mechanism for raising domain events inside of our system. And we also have an invitation accepted domain event. So obviously we need to find the appropriate place to raise this event. I'm going to head over to the gathering aggregate route. Inside we have the accept invitation method. Let's take a look at what we have there. There are two branches of our method. One is when an invitation is expired and we return a failure result. The other one is the one we are interested in. We accept an invitation, do some additional logic and return a new attendee. After we have accepted the invitation, we can go ahead and raise a new domain event. This one will be invitation accepted domain event. And I'm going to pass in the invitation ID and the ID of our gathering. So now when we are accepting an invitation and we do so successfully, we also raise a new domain event, the invitation accepted domain event. You can see that this method is used only in one place and this is inside of the accept invitation command handler. So I'm going to go there and now it will start to make sense how we can use the domain events pattern to our advantage. Notice here that we are sending an email only when an invitation is accepted. We already have an invitation accepted domain event. So what we would have to do to get rid of this email sending logic inside of the command handler is to create an event handler 
and inside of that event handler we will send the corresponding email. To do that we need to introduce a little bit more boilerplate code back in our domain event. I will get rid of these comments now and notice that this is still only a marker interface. I don't want to implement the logic for connecting events to their respective handlers from scratch so I'm going to introduce a new dependency in our domain project and you all know this one and I heard it's very popular among some developers so I'm going to add the mediator library here. Mediator has a concept of an I notification. The I notification interface allows us to create a respective notification handler to handle the notification. In this case, this will be our domain event. Back in our application project, I'm going to open up the invitations folder and I'm going to add a new folder called events. And I will add a new class, which I will call invitation accepted domain event handler all right let's fix this up i'm going to make this class sealed and i will make it inherit from i notification handler coming from mediator what we are going to handle is the invitation accepted domain event which we previously defined let's go ahead and implement this all right so inside of this method, I want to move the logic for sending the invitation accepted email. If I go back to the accept invitation command handler and cut all of this logic out and go back to our invitation accepted domain handler and paste it, we can now get rid of this if statement, checking if the invitation is accepted because we are handling the invitation accepted domain event. So this is already true. So we are left with the logic for sending the email. We obviously need to introduce the email service. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And now the, the next thing that we are missing is the gathering. The way to fetch the gathering is using the gathering repository. All right. And now I'm going to make this method async, obviously. So we need to fetch the gathering. I'm going to say gathering is fetched using the gathering repository, get by ID method. And I'm going to pass the gathering ID from the notification object and the cancellation token. All right, the gathering can be null if by any chance the gathering was deleted between the time we raise the domain event and managed to handle it. So I'm going to do a null check on the gathering and return if it's null. Otherwise, we are free to send our invitation accepted email. You can see this concept is extremely powerful. You can create as many domain events as you want. This is very useful when you have operations that are not supposed to go together. In our previous case, inside of the accept invitation command handler, we had the situation where we are talking to the database, adding or updating some data and then saving changes and we are also attempting to send an email inside of the same transaction. This is generally problematic because you are connecting two systems, the database and the email provider, and if each one of them fails, you run into a problem of how you would compensate this. Back in our domain event handler, the one thing that I didn't tackle is how you are going to actually publish your domain events through Mediator. I'm going to show you the implementation in one of the future videos, but I'm going to briefly explain the concept right now. What you would do is, when you are saving changes using the unit of work, gather all of the domain events that were raised inside of that transaction and persist those domain events inside of the database. Then you would need a background job that would read these domain events and publish them one by one. Essentially, this is considered an, an outbox pattern, but I don't want this video to become too complicated, so I'm only tackling the domain events and domain event handlers concepts. Let me know what you think about the domain events pattern. Do you use it in your application or would you want to use it in your application? If you like this video so far, consider leaving it a like, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos, and until next time, keep being awesome.